In this video about TouchOS C, we're going to learn about how to make your own custom layouts for the iPad. This is done in the TouchOS C editor, which you already have on your machine if you followed along with our second video. This program is where most of the action is going to take place. Like I said in the other video, it's free. First of all, when you open the program, be sure to change the layout size to iPad. Then select your orientation, horizontal or vertical. There are several different object types which can all be accessed via secondary clicking. The ones we're going to cover right now are faders, knobs, push buttons, and labels. Faders are virtual sliders that allow you to control the levels of things. I mostly use them for volume levels and send amounts. Other great uses for them are delay times, pitch control, and things like that. You can make them long or short depending on your needs. For example, a long fader is good for really exact control over something. The thing to remember about faders, though, is that you can touch on them anywhere and they'll jump to that location. So even if you make a long one, you can still jump the level around quickly. Knobs are just like faders, except that they're round. You can use them for all the same things when you need to save space on your layout. Push buttons are great for turning things on or off, or for making keyboard patches. They send a momentary signal that only lasts as long as you hold them down. The tutorial template has push buttons for turning clips on and off, the play and stop buttons, and the scene selectors. Labels don't send any information anywhere. They just allow you to label things. You can put them directly on top of buttons as overlays. Make sure they are on the top layer so you can see them. Use a secondary click to do this. I usually turn background off and sometimes turn outline on. One important thing about faders, knobs, and push buttons is that each one has to have its own unique ID. This is how other programs keep track of where the information is coming from. You can change the ID here. I usually keep auto label turned on and then make sure the IDs are all unique. When you're finished with your layout, make sure to save it. Then on the iPad, touch layouts, then touch add. On the computer, click the sync button and your computer name will show up on the iPad screen. Touch it and the transfer will take place immediately. There should be no lag. If you're transferring a layout that you've already made, a prompt will show up on the iPad asking if you want to overwrite the previous one. Select Yes. Now, navigate back to the main Touch OSC menu screen on the iPad and touch Done and view your layout. You can continue to make changes until the layout is perfect for you. The final step to all of this will be covered in the next tutorial, DoveSpot Touch OSC Tutorial Osculator.